Alright, so thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Max McNerney. I'm the owner of Max Live Strings. And my name is Max Cochran. I'm the marketing director of Max Live Strings. So Max Live Strings is a lacrosse company specializing in wax lacrosse mesh and a stringing service. So our wax lacrosse mesh is called Max Wax Mesh. Uh, here's a piece for you right here to kind of feel it. It's, it's got a wax coating on the outer uh, layer of it and it's also embedded inside of the nylon fibers of the mesh. So this really helps the lacrosse player because it makes their pocket waterproof. So when they're playing in the rain, when the, the field is wet for maybe dew in the morning or something like that, it's not going, the water's not going to get in the mesh and make it throw differently. So it's going to really help the player and their confidence. Uh, it's also really easy to string. So with other meshes, they've been known to have a really hard coating on the outside. It takes a long time for the player to get their pocket right. With this, they can string it up and start playing the game right after they string it. Uh, we also offer a lacrosse stringing service. So the way that you get the, uh, the mesh on the head is very unique to the player's playing style. So uh, based on the different knots and the way you bunch the mesh is going to make the player throw. Uh, it's going to make the ball stay in the pocket a little bit longer, um, have more hold on it. So basically what I've learned over the years is how to uh, do those knots in certain ways to help uh, manipulate how the player plays. Uh, over the years, we've learned how to be a manufacturer, a retailer, and a wholesaler. Uh, through manufacturing the mesh, we've learned uh, where to get the base mesh from. We don't actually weave it. We, uh, we, make the, we do the coating of the, the wax and then package it up and it's ready to go. Uh, we're also retailers on our website, maxlifestrings.com. Uh, so we sell for retail prices and people go there to buy it with PayPal. And then we're also wholesalers to sporting goods stores such as Played Against Sports, uh, which is a, a really great retail sporting goods chain of stores uh, that sells our mesh uh, all over the country. So the one good thing about lacrosse is that throughout the years it's been increasing tremendously. And uh, according to the Sports Research Consultant, it's been at an increased rate of 200%, which is good for us because that keeps us in business and allows us to attract new players that are entering the sport and allows us to offer what we have to them. Um, another strength that we have is we've got a basic, simple manufacturing process, um, which Max will... So our simple about. manufacturing process consists of just taking the, the mesh and our special wax formula and embedding it inside of the mesh. Uh, so all we have to, that maybe takes a minute or so, then we pack it up and it's ready to go. Uh, we also have uh, the benefits of a small business, which means we don't have to go through um, a lot of people to make decisions. And then we also... Uh, we just have great marketing and we can spend a lot of time uh, on one certain thing and get things done quickly. And then for the marketing and sales channels, although we're a small business, we're still able to get out and interact with the community. Um, Max and I and our company has uh, involved ourselves within the youth across uh, uh, community, you know, uh, putting our products out to them and increasing our brand and awareness as well. And uh, also communicating through online advertising and local newspaper ads and etc. Uh, so one of the weaknesses we have is since we're such a small company, we don't have a lot of um, room to designate it for marketing because, you know, we don't earn as much profit as we would like to since we're so small. But throughout the years, you know, we've been uh, trying new ways to uh, dedicate our some of our profits that we are to marketing so we can get our brand and awareness out. Uh, another weakness that we have is the difficulty in scaling our company. Uh, because Lash and I are both full-time students and varsity lacrosse players, we don't have a lot of time outside of school and lacrosse to spend on growing the business, and we don't have the resources either, so that's uh, one of our difficulties. Uh -huh. Also, another thing is um, since we're trying to gain our reputation and increase our brand, um, people don't really know us, so they can't really fully trust us on how good our product is. However, you know, with the right marketing techniques and getting our name out there, we'll, we'll be able to create our brand and have our reputation come higher than what it is now. Uh, some of the opportunities that we have that I'll go into more detail later in the presentation are lacrosse tournaments that we can set up booths at to sell our mesh and our string service, uh, a bigger website presence so we get more traffic coming into our website maxlatchstrings.com, uh, girls lacrosse stringing which we believe is an untapped lacrosse market that we can get into, 
and big name across retailers. So like I said before, we're in uh, play, played against sports, but we'd like to get into lacrosse specific stores. Uh, some of the threats that we have as a business are other wax mesh competitors. Uh, as much as, uh, as a niche market, wax lacrosse mesh seems, there are competitors uh, that take a big chunk of the market. Um, also, a change in the economy. Since lacrosse is a pretty expensive sport, you know, we, our products appeal to the incomes of high, or high family income, uh, families with high incomes. And um, because of that, if there's a change in the economy, then families may not want to spend as much money on our products, although we are the least expensive. But since lacrosse is kind of a leisure item, they might just hold on to the old mesh instead of going out and purchasing new mesh. Um, a change in player preference. Uh, one thing about lacrosse players is they're always finding new ways because you always want to be comfortable with how you throw or how you catch and etc. So um, sometimes ch players are always trying out new things and always want to uh, try out new types of mesh and stringing ways. So with a player change in player preference, we may not be um, available for the customers sometimes. Um, and a potential decrease in the interest of the sport. Uh, since lacrosse has been growing uh, over the years, there is a chance that a new sport might come in the way and you know take the interest away from lacrosse and might take the attention or grab the attention of the uh, kids who are playing sports and attract it to themselves. Uh, one of the opportunities that I mentioned before was lacrosse tournaments. So we've set up booths at local lacrosse tournaments. This one is at the Fairfax Fall Brawl and that happens during the fall, and we have great sales coming from there. We sell our mesh, and uh, this is one of our stringers here, stringing up a stick for a player who came up and bought our stringing service. And what we like to do over the summer, which is when most of the lacrosse tournaments are, is get a good relationship with the, the tournament organizer so we can set up booths there uh, and also minimize our fees to, uh, that we have to pay to be there to sell our mesh. So it's a great marketing tool as well as a great revenue. Uh, one thing we want to do is change the way our website is and to make it easily accessible and navigatable. Um, one thing Max and I were looking into was the use of debit cards and credit cards because as of right now, PayPal is kind of a slow process into buying the merchandise we sell. So allowing customers to use credit cards and debit cards will allow the payment to go much faster. Um, also, just basic online advertising such as through uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, you know, all the big time social medias because a lot of lacrosse players are out um, researching and, you know, on social media. So if we appeal to them, they can find us much easier and more efficiently. Uh, the untapped market that I talked about earlier, girls lacrosse stringing. So lacrosse, or girls lacrosse is actually a lot different than guys lacrosse, especially in the way that their sticks are strong. So they have a lot of a, a more flat pocket, but they still have to string it and they're string all throughout it. So I've learned how to string girls lacrosse sticks because it's kind of similar to how guys used to string their lacrosse sticks maybe uh, 10 or 20 years ago. Uh, so we want to be one of the first people who appeal to girls lacrosse strings because when they get it, they have their stick and if it falls apart, they don't really know what to do. So we can come into this market, set our, a reasonable price for it, and then uh, get the name out there and start stringing more girls lacrosse sticks. Uh, like I said before, here are some of the big name across retailers, Lax World and Lacrosse Unlimited. They have stores all over the country, and what we'd like to do is get in contact with their buyers for their corporate and uh, have them experiment with selling our mesh in their stores. And we've actually been to some of these stores and they've sold it individually, but the thing is they're corporate stores, so you have to go through their corporate and then they distribute it to all of their stores. So that would be a huge revenue for us because in our other stores, they have lacrosse, but then they're all sports. So with just lacrosse, they would buy a lot more and a lot more often. And another thing, a major thing that we're planning to do is having a lacrosse training seminar. And it would be he held here at our local school in Loudoun Valley. And the purpose for this seminar is mainly to educate uh, the younger kids around the local area, just to the fundamentals of how to string a stick. So if there's a game time problem, you know, they can just quickly fix up their stick. Um, now, we don't want to teach them everything because, you know, we also provide a streaming service ourselves. So if we teach them everything, they wouldn't want to come to us. So we would just, you know, give them enough knowledge so whenever there's a problem, they can fix it as quick as possible. 
Um, another thing this streaming seminar would do would be just building the relations between uh, our company and the local community, um, helping us build our uh, branding or our brand and our local awareness and just having a positive uh, relationship. Uh, since the community, you know, here has such a high demand for lacrosse and lacrosse is such a popular sport, we'd be able to do pretty well with the lacrosse during the seminar. Uh, our social media presence. Uh, so, I we've made a YouTube channel, a Twitter page, and an Instagram page where we post uh, lacrosse reviews, stringings, and just to help out the players so they can learn more about us. And so we have, I think, over 200 videos now with 3,000 subscribers uh, that come and watch whenever we release a video. That's great. And then we also have we're also partners with the Lacrosse Network, which is a YouTube collaboration channel with all lacrosse content of you on YouTube. So they contacted us maybe about six months ago to uh, help us become partners with them. So now we're featured on their channel, which has over 70,000 subscribers. So we've gained a lot of views and exposure from them. And we hope to continue to make uh, post pictures and videos to help uh, increase our brand and our awareness. Uh, we also would like to <coughs> attend more trade shows. Uh, this is our booth at the Played Against Sports trade show in Las Vegas uh, last summer. So we went there to talk to all the store owners of Played Against Sports stores across the nation. I think over 170 store owners attended. Really? And so we talked to a lot of them. And we got a great relationship with a lot of them and we were able to pick up some orders as well as uh, make new relationships so they could order in the future whenever they needed mesh. Um, our current financial situation includes uh, the money that we have in our checking account that we uh, spend on uh, manufacturing uh, goods and things like that, uh, which it totals to about uh, $2,500. And then our assets that we have, including the mesh that we have already made, uh, the heads, the strings, and merchandise, uh, like uh, apparel that we have, uh, totals out to about $8,000. So in total, we have around $10,000 uh, invested in our company. Uh, some of the capital that we need to expand into the opportunities that we mentioned before, such as the tournaments, the trade shows, things like that, um, we would use that money to go to part-time employee salaries, such as paying Lodge to do more, uh, more work with us and have a consistent schedule for him, as well as our stringers who would help manufacture and string sticks whenever we got them. Do you two string also? Uh, I just string, but we also have a, a stringer who is more behind the scenes and just does, he comes to my house whenever we need stringing or mesh, something like that. Gee, don't ask questions yet because they're on the clock. And oh, I'm sorry. sorry. No yeah, I no forgot. Problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we would also use uh, the money to go to tournaments and trade shows and because they charge fees, um, we would have to pay for them, but the marketing value that would come out of those would definitely at least double the profit that we would have. And then also, uh, for a marketing and advertising budget, which is really important to us because it's one of our weaknesses and this is where we really want to uh, dedicate our funding to go to this so we can increase our awareness. And the funding that we get um, will come through our profits, meaning that we won't have to go out to investors for them to take a chunk of our company. So we would, get our, we would ch channel our profits into these uh, expansion opportunities. Uh, in conclusion, we uh, we're just a lacrosse company looking to expand into any sort of market that's in the lacrosse community that we're looking for, such as girls lacrosse stringing. So we're open to anything. We're not just a limited company trying to sell one product. So uh, we hope to expand into the opportunities that we have and uh, meet our goals. Fabulous.